In this tutorial, we're gonna show you how to automatically generate dynamic batches of records using Airtable automations and interfaces. So what do I mean by that? Think about a new client, and with the single click of a button, you're gonna be able to schedule out an entire year of activities for that client with dynamic due dates based on when that client starts with you. Or maybe you've got a new employee and they're a sales employee and you wanna schedule out their onboarding. Well, what you can do with the click of a button, we're gonna schedule out tasks for that onboarding plan. And those tasks can be different if it's a sales employee than if it's an administrative employee. Or maybe you've got a new project and you want to schedule out the first two months of a project with the click of a button and have dynamic due dates and dynamic tasks. We're gonna show you how to do all of that with Airtable automations and Airtable interfaces. So let's dive in. So I've got three tables in my base, clients, tasks, and annual tasks. Our first table, clients, pretty straightforward. It's just my clients. The two things to notice here though, I am driving my activities that I'm scheduling off of the service level. So I've got three service levels, basic, intermediate, and professional. So the basic, they get checked in with once a year, twice a year. Intermediate, I'm gonna check in with you quarterly, and professional, I'm gonna check in with you every month. My kickoff date is the date with which I want to schedule everything off of. So if I've got a monthly, uh, a monthly check-in because I'm on professional and I start on 3-1, then on 4-1 I want to check in and on 5-1 I want to check in or every four weeks I want to check in. So those two fields are driving the dynamic portion of these activities that are going to be scheduled. Then I've got my tasks, which are getting automatically scheduled and assigned to my client. You'll see that I've got statuses, I've got notes, I've got due dates, I've got uh, task types, I've got deliverables. These are all things that are automatically being generated with the click of a button. And then lastly, and this is the really cool part, I've got annual tasks. So you notice I had basic, intermediate, and professional. And what I've done is I've created these tasks, and these are almost like a template, so that when I click this button, I'm gonna look and I'm gonna see, find me all of the basic tasks, and then I wanna create those, if my client has a basic service level. Or if they're on intermediate service level, find me all of the intermediate tasks, and then schedule those. And so that's what's happening here. So if you've got a, a certain type of project, this for every website project, these are the tasks that I wanna do, versus every ongoing support project, these are the tasks. Or, for every salesperson that starts, I want to do these things. But for every administrative person that starts, I want to do these sets of tasks. So that's how we're grouping it. You should have a, a field that is a single select in your service, in, in your annual tasks that matches the service level or the field in your client so that we know what to look for. Additionally, what I have in my annual tasks is I've got this field that says weeks after kickoff. So I have that kickoff date when my project starts, but I wanna know how many weeks after my kickoff do I want to do my mid-year check-in? I wanna do it 26 weeks. My annual check-in, I actually wanna do probably 52 weeks after. And then I've got quarterly, which is gonna be you know, 12 weeks, 24 weeks, 36 weeks. So this number here is going to dynamically create the due date on the tasks that are generated. Then I've got a default status notes. If I update any of these and then when I automatically create it, all of this information is gonna transfer over on those new tasks that were created. So that is a little bit about how the base is structured. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go look at the interface, a very simple interface that I've built, and we're gonna add a button and then create an automation. Okay, so here I am inside of my interface page. That is, it's very simple. You can see that I've got my client, I've got my service level and my kickoff date. 
And then I've got a grid that has all of my tasks. Pretty straightforward and simple. When I want to do those, I want to add a button so that when I click that button, I have activities or tasks that show up on this list of tasks. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my view and then I'm going to add a button. So I go to all elements and I go to button and I can just drag that. Let's add it up top. And what I want to do, let's make this green and let's call this uh, I'm going to change the action first to run an automation. Now I can change the appearance and let's call this create tasks. Jumping back to my action, I'm going to create a new automation from this pop up here. That's going to bring up a new window where I can do all of my automating. This new automation is going to be create annual or create, in this case, they're annual, but uh, for you, they might not be, but create annual tasks. I'm going to continue in automations. So now my button click trigger is set up in automations and it's already linked to that button that is on my interface. So that's pretty handy. What I can do is I can choose a record. I'm going to choose no code collab. And now it has pulled in on the right side. It's pulled in everything about no code collab. So we know that that is working. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to say, okay, so I clicked the record or the button on my no code collab record. Now I want to go find all of the annual tasks, that template of tasks based on my service level. So the action that I'm going to run is I'm going to go and find records and the records that I'm going to find, I'm going to add this, I'm going to grab my description is going to be grab all tasks based on service level. Client, client service level. Okay. So the place that I want to find my records is in the annual tasks table. And I want to find those records, as I said, based on my client service level. So I'm going to come in here and it's going to be based on a condition and that condition is going to be where the service level is. And I could choose an option, but I want it to be dynamic. I want it to look for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this gear and instead of static, I'm going to choose dynamic. And then that brings up a little plus sign and I can say it is going to be based on the service level name. And that is the service level name of the button that was clicked. So if I show you that again, let's just, let's just show you that again on the left side of my panel. Cause this is going to be important as we start adding more steps on the left side of my panel, I get to access the data that is in other steps of the automation. Right now I only have one step. I only have this button click. So, the button click is on a specific record, a specific client. And now here's all the information from that button click. And so I'm looking for the service level and the name of the service level. So we are all good. So I'm going to test that action. And what's going to happen is it's now going to go and look and find the records. So it has found these five records, one, two, three, four, five, that have an intermediate service level on the annual tasks table. So that is all looking good. So now I have found my records. And now what I want to do is I want to loop through those records. I, cause I want to, for each one of those records, I want to create a new task inside of my tasks table. So I'm going to click on this advanced, advanced logic or action. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a repeating group. So I'm going to click on that repeating group. And now what this is going to do is for, it's going to say repeat for each, each of what, and what I want to repeat over, just like I've got those other steps, I want to repeat over all of the records that I found. So I'm going to use as a list. So I'm going to repeat over all those records. So if there's three, it's going to do it three times. If there's 30, it's going to do it 30 times. So I'm going to repeat over those 
and I'm going to say loop loop through all the uh, all the annual tasks. So let's test that. And here we go. We've got five records that it just looped over. So now everything that happens inside of this, this repeating, this looping, it's going to happen one after the other, one after the other. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually not create the record. And the reason for that is because I have a dynamic date. I have a, a date that I want to update based on how many weeks out. So I actually need to figure out dynamically what the due date of each record is. So I'm gonna do that first. So the thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually run a script inside of my automation. I'm just gonna clear this out. And then I'm gonna add an input variable. Now, what's happening is I can grab data for from just that record I'm looping over. So if, if we call this well, actually, I need my kickoff date because I need to know my starting point. So I'm going to call this kickoff date. And then what I want to do is I don't want data for my current item. I want the kickoff date from the client that I clicked on. So I'm going to go to my other sources and I'm going to say when a button is clicked because that's the client I clicked on. And I want to find my kickoff date. So I am going to, let me delete that. So in my code, in this script, I'm gonna pass in this kickoff date. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to calculate the new date or the, the future date uh, that's needed. Then I'm gonna add another input variable and I am going to find in my current item, I wanna find the number of weeks after kickoff that I am uh, going to schedule this out. So I'm going to pass into this script the number of weeks after kickoff, and I'm going to call this date adjustment. Now these are in weeks. You could do days, you could do months. I'm doing weeks. So now at this point, what I want you to do is I want you, if you need the date, and if you're doing the dynamic date, then you'll need this. If you are not doing a dynamic date, you do not need to do this step. But what I want you to do now is jump over to nocodecollab.com, go to the tutorial page, the link is in, de in the description, and you can grab the code that's basically going to determine our future date. So I'm gonna give you a second to go do that. I'm gonna go grab that code, and we will see you back here once you grab the code. Okay, so I have copied my code, and I am going to paste it right into the code area here. Really quickly on the code, what's happening is this first line is basically letting the script know that we are going to be looking for inputs coming from previous steps. And then what I'm doing is I'm grabbing my date and I'm saving that. I'm grabbing the adjustment value. So how many weeks I'm changing. And then I'm just doing a little bit because I'm doing this in weeks, I'm taking my adjustment value times seven, seven days in a week. So I'm getting my days to add, and then I'm adding my days to the date. Pretty straightforward. The last thing that's happening is my output.set is actually setting a new variable that I can use in future steps. So this is very important. You can name this whatever you want. Because I'm naming this due date, you will see that in future steps, when I map that into my new record, I will be looking for due date. So let's just quick test this. And you'll see that my dates come in. My kickoff date is March 1st. I want my, for this record that I'm testing, it's one week out. And my new due date is March 8th. If I were to change this, let's call this, um, just to make it easy, Kyle's due date. What will happen when I test is you'll see my output for my future steps gets updated to Kyle's due date. So this is where you are naming your variable that you can use in later steps. So let's just finish editing that. So now inside of this loop that I'm running, I've now calculated my dynamic date. And now what I can do is I can create a new record. And so because I'm looping through this, I will calculate the date and then I can add a record and then I can do it all over again for as many records as there are in this list. 
So I'm going to create a let create a record, create a new task. And the table that I want to create that record in is my tasks table. And now what I do is I just start creating and mapping these tasks. So I'm going to go task name is going to be the current item, the current item in my looping. And that is going to be my task name. Then I'm going to add another field, my client. Now my client is the, the client uh, where I clicked the button. So when I map that, I want to go to where, when I click that button, what I'm going to do is I am going to grab the record ID from that button click. So that is going to be, and you'll see by entering record IDs or names, so I'm going to add that record ID. Then I'm going to add another one, which is my due date. So instead of just putting a date, I'm going to click the gear, make it dynamic, and then Remember in that script we set our due date, I'm gonna click on the script and I've got Kyle's due date. Should maybe test this again just to make sure that the, the output is consistent. So my due date, finish editing. So due date, see how Kyle's due date is not valid anymore. So I'm gonna delete that. Let's do due date. Make it dynamic, and now it's going to come. My due date's coming from the script, and we've got due date. Next one is status. It's going to be dynamic, and my status is coming from my current item. Status and my name. Then we've got notes. Notes also dynamic from the current item, and I will add the notes. If any of these are blank, it's just going to leave it blank. So you don't need to worry about any of that. Task type, is this an email? Is this a phone call? This is also dynamic, coming from my current item. And that is gonna be my task type. And then the last one here is my deliverables. I'm gonna map that dynamically to the deliverables in the current item. And this is actually a multi-select field. So you're seeing that the multi-select works too. So now what's happened is I've mapped all of these fields. And if I generate a preview of that, it's gonna test. And we can see that my new record that was created as a, as a new task name, my client is no code collab, all the stuff. So the test passed. If I turn this on and I head back over to my interface, I will need to go back into the edit mode because I hadn't published with this button live yet. But if I publish this interface, it's now live. And let's do professional so that I'm going to get a bunch of these things. So if I now click create tasks, you'll see that my tasks are going to start populating right here. So now I've got all these tasks that have started. And the cool thing is on your interface, you could display this as a calendar. You could display this as a Kanban board. You could display this as a list. But I've got all of my stuff in here. I've got my, the deliverables that I need. They've all flown, uh, flowed through. If I click into one of my records, I can see that I've got notes. I've got all of my information. And so now I've created this automation that is automatically helping me stay on top of my best practices. How you visualize it in your interface or uh, on your base is all up to you, but with the click of a button, we've now created an automation that automatically generates dynamic batches of records inside of Airtable. Really quickly, what I'll do is I'll show you the data so we can come back and we can see that all of these tasks are in as well. So that is uh, how to do that. If you end up changing or adding fields, you will want to come back in, in the, into your automation and you will need to map any new fields that you have in this new record. So if I end up adding another field, in order to update this automation, I'll come back in here. I will pull through a new, a new record. So I've got all of the new fields. I'll have to choose that new record. Then I'll have to go step-by-step step through 
and then I can map it. And now that is how you would update this automation if any of your fields ended up changing in the future. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful and you can see how this is a, a workflow that really not only saves you time, but can help you provide a more consistent experience for your projects, your clients, your employees, and, and really be something that uh, takes Airtable from something that's just storing data to actually helping you move the needle and provide, um, provide a better experience. So. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps and uh, like this video and hopefully we will see you at the next tutorial.